What is up, nerdlings? What's up, nerdlings? And welcome to our game room tour. You heard it. That's right. Game room tour. I am Tom. I'm Lady Lacey. This is Do You Nerd. Now this is a variety channel that showcases all the fun things that we nerd out about, predominantly uh, toys and of course uh, games. Toys but you know, matter. we love uh, we love our movies, we love our comic books and everything. We also do a lot of event coverage, so doing videos about conventions, renaissance festivals. But this time around we are taking a look at Mr. and Mrs. Weston's peculiar home for wayward games and extraordinary consoles that is the official name of our game room there's even a sign now we could make this super easy on ourselves and do it vlog style and just kind of shakily take the camera around the room and kind of show you what's there but that's not our style so we are going to do the talking while the b-roll does the walking to give you some lovely closer uppers that's right hey leave some comments down below if there is anything that you would like to see a closer upper on and let's jump right into this. One of the biggest problems we have with trying to do a tour is we don't really know what people want to see. That's why we love when people actually get to come and visit and they get to look around and check out the stuff that catches their eye. But let's start right here. So we've got the game wall. Up top, you've got some PS2 games. Now, this is not all of our games. A lot of the sports and music titles are put into a bin. I'm sorry, Captain Algebra. I really don't think anybody's going to come over and want to play Tiger Woods, but those bins are easy to access. So if you do, we can dig those out. One of these days, he's going to prove you wrong. Now, the PS2 games, while they do go across the top of the ceiling, which, by the way, is a great use of that space because sometimes up there close to the ceiling, you don't use that space. They do kind of spill down to the side here with a little media shelf that's already getting pretty full as is. on top of the PS2 games, all kinds of fun little trinkets. You've got some energy drink cans, you've got some pasta cans, you've got uh, some toys, I believe some are from like various kids meals I and stuff like that. I think the majority like of them are from kids meals, yeah. We also strung up some fun gaming themed lights and hanging off those are some of the Hot Wheel Mario Kart flying figures. Let's face it, you want them flying in the air and what better way to do it than to hang them off of lights? Right here on the wall, that's just about the only wall space we do have to actually showcase some of the prints that we've collected over the years. We have done a closer upper featuring these fantastic pieces by Muse Tap Studios. As you can see, pinup style with girls representing the consoles, guys representing the handhelds, or in the case of the Switch, a little bit of both. My personal favorite. Right here at the edge, this was an amazing find at a thrift shop. I love this comic book magazine rack. It is a nice heavy duty metal one, so it's not tipping over. Plus it's perfect for magnets and we get to change out some great comics on display. For instance, some of these gaming related ones, the Game Boy, Super Mario Brothers, you've got Tomb Raider, Dragon's Lair, Captain N. So this is really, really cool. And it fit right here so perfectly. It was almost like it was made for it. On to the media shelves. These are simple black media shelves. They're super low profile, so they fit perfectly up against the wall and still maintain a nice pathway right here. It, they're not obtrusive. You're not really going to bump into them, and the way that they hold all the games and everything on here, it's so form-fitting. It works out really, really nice. They are literally as wide as an NES cartridge is tall. On top of these media shelves, we have what I like to playfully call our little arcade. So we got a bunch of the really fun arcade cabinets. As our patrons to our little arcade, we have put the NECA Toonie Terrors, and we have really had a lot of fun with placing them in weird positions or sticking different combinations with different people. So. We have a lot of fun doing this and we definitely look to expand on this one.
on to the games. As she said, these are so perfect for the loose NES cartridges. We do have some boxed games, which you'll see in just a moment. But as for the loose games, they fit so well. Most of these have some kind of dust sleeve. A couple of them do have the uh, lovely protectors if it's a game that is worth a little more in value or a little more in nostalgia for us. Something that I absolutely love, though, are the video game dust sleeves, content creator sleeves. They work perfectly for those black Tengen cartridges that are kind of hard to showcase the title of anyway. So this is a great way to keep those games safe and to show off some great content creators. Plus, Chris, Video Game Dust Sleeves does amazing work. What about that 3D one that's a exclusive? Next are the loose Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64 cartridges. Absolutely love the Super Nintendo. The Nintendo 64, we opted for the end labels. Let's face it, those cartridges always should have had end labels. And as much as I do love video game dust sleeves work, I really like how these look with the end labels on them. And I don't intend to sell these games anytime soon, so I'm not worried about that. Something Lady Lacey really enjoyed when we started to put these on here is how well these shelves fit the PS3 and the PS4 games. Again, very form-fitting. Just about every last bit of space is used up as those fit on the shelf. And they are so perfectly aligned to the shelves. They look beautiful. Now, just a quick note, if you do happen to see any PS3 games, especially that you're curious, wait, did that have a physical release? That may not be the case. For a while, anytime we had digital games, I was printing off fake covers for them. But it is really a good idea when you have friends over, it's a lot easier to peruse a case versus your digital library on your system. Now, the further down the shelf you move, you see a lot more variation. You've got some ColecoVision carts. You've got those lovely rainbow-colored Famicom cartridges. My favorite, and yes, they are not alphabetical. They are rainbow-oriented. Rainbow-abetical. Rainbow-abetical. I like it. We've got some empty boxes for the end gauge. Unfortunately, don't have those cartridges. That's a shame. But then we have some fun TI-99 cartridges. You'll see some Atari 800, 400 cartridges mixed in. Even some VIC-20 carts. These things are long and in charge. Some loose Intellivision cartridges. And that's when you run into the Nintendo Switch area. To be fair, this needs to be expanded because we've got some loose cases out and about already. And yeah, that, that Switch collection is ever growing. Needs to be bigger. Making up the bottom of the shelves are the handhelds. Now what I have done is collected a bunch of DS cases, thanks to our local GameStop, and I have modified them to fit Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Things like Virtual Boy, Game Gear, and Neo Geo Pockets. I've made some fake covers for them just so they will look really nice on the shelves. Obviously covers like this aren't fooling anyone since these games did not come in these cases, but they really look nice having some spines instead of being put into a binder or otherwise somewhere loose where you really can't see what you have in the handheld offering. That being said, we do have a couple of box games, like with the Game Gear games. You have a small but mighty selection of CDI games, including, yes, the unholy trilogy of Zelda games. There's also a little bit of Dreamcast love. Fantastic system, but man, those games are harder and harder to find all the time. You've also got your loose Odyssey 2 games with the handle, cartridges with a handle. Who knew? 
and we've got some Super Famicom games, most of which we do have sleeves for. Again, video game dust sleeves. Look how good those look, because they also don't have end labels. Seriously, Nintendo, what was the thought process there? At the very end, we have a different kind of media shelf. This houses, again, some of the PS2 overflow, and then some of the bigger box collections, especially with those PS4 and Nintendo Switch collector editions. We've got our teeny tiny Famicom disc collection in a great 3D printed holder. And just some other loose cartridges like some 32X and so on. I really like this because the Sega Genesis cart fits perfectly in one of those lovely 1980s cassette tape holders. So this is a great way to store your loose cartridges. Not only is it the Sega Genesis, but also the Master System cartridges as well. Now the back wall most of you have seen in numerous videos because we usually have this as our backdrop. Up top we have so many fun pieces. We've got a Pac-Man album. We've got tons of gaming based board games. I think you guys probably know which is my favorite right there, Dead Center. We also have some fun figures related to games because, I mean, all the stuff in a game room, everything. This isn't even all of the gaming board games that we have though, we just don't have the space to display them all. As I mentioned before, here are some of the boxed NES games that we have. So we don't have a huge boxed collection, but we do have some good ones here. We also have a nice variety of a boxed Super Nintendo games, some heavy hitters there, and just some all-time 16-bit favorites. We also have some boxed Nintendo 64 games. Most of these do have protectors on them because you gotta keep those boxes safe. We have a fairly small GameCube collection, but I'd like to think that we've got some good titles here, especially when it comes to the Zelda offerings. The Intellivision boxes. Now, we had a good collection of these, but wow, some of them were really smashed and looking rough until we put them in the protective boxes. That's really helped them to keep their shape now and not get damaged any further. Some of these big boxes for Wii and Wii U games look really nice on the shelf until you need that space and then they're usually moved somewhere else. Next up are the Wii games and the Wii U. Again, a lot of the sports titles and miscellaneous titles like music things are put away in bins, so we can have a little more space out here. Nearing the bottom, we have some of those very large CDI Games, let's use some air quotes there because they're not exactly games. We also have our PS1 long boxes, always fun to collect, always hard to properly display. And then a small collection of PSP games. As much as I like the PSP, I think it's a great little system. That thing has always murdered my hands. One of the coolest things from back in the day were the cartridge holders, like these Nintendo 64 ones. And these are perfect for holding our Japanese Nintendo 64 games. 
We have more of those lovely 80s tape deck holders. And come on guys, every single household had these wood paneled VHS and cassette tape holders. So again, perfect for holding the Genesis games. The top center shelf just has some fun collectibles from over the years. I think that you were one of the ones that really had to have that Pip Boy. Ah, uh, yes, I did. We found it really cheap actually one day at GameStop. I'm not sure why it was on sale. Nobody wanted it, but it's ours now. There's a couple of fun Zelda items tossed in there. The power glove because it's so bad. And look at that. We even have some Mario cars <gasps> still in their packaging. I guess Lacey hasn't got to these yet. No, I just really like the packaging on these. And then down below, we have the Zelda Shrine. Now, when I say Zelda Shrine, you have to keep in mind, this is not everything Zelda we have. No. This is just some of the more fun, displayable pieces. But it wouldn't be a Weston household without a Shrine to Zelda. I would just like to point out this lovely little uh, stand that the Zelda stuff is on was something I found at a flea market and bought for myself for either my plushies or my action figures. Somebody stole it, and I had to admit that the Zelda stuff looked so good on it, I couldn't, I couldn't take it back. Feel free to cut that future, Tom. At the very bottom, these little totes here actually hold our Disney Infinity characters. So these were really cool figures, we just don't have the space to display them. But they are stored safely away, so things like the Star Wars ones can keep all of their lightsabers. Alright, this is the part that Mike, Retro Gamer Boy, was waiting on. The boxed Sega Genesis video games. So uh, they're taking up the shelves pretty quickly here. Although the Sega Master System box collection is starting to shape up nicely. Shout out to Retro Wolf actually for helping us expand that a little bit. Here are our Sega Saturn games. Not too many of those, but just like these Sega CD games, this stuff is tough to find out and about. Right here in the corner, there's a few Sega Pico games because, yeah, we collect a little bit of everything. Like the TurboGrafx-16, we're very lucky to have some of these games complete in box, even that cardboard box that we really didn't need other than the, uh, the jewel case. Just a few box 32X games and past the lovely lady's Frogger machine. One of my favorite arcade systems and Tom was lucky enough to come across this in a flea market and knew that there wasn't a question he had to get it for me. Hey, not only is it one of your favorite arcades, but it's even you sized. It is me sized. Oh, those 3DO boxes, the long boxes. You want to talk about impossible to get on a shelf? Laying these down was the only way these were going to fit. I think we looked and they wouldn't even fit up top. Mm -mm. Then we have some boxed Atari games and they are right next to the boxed Odyssey 2 games. These are really, really fun things to have in boxes. You know, whether it's the Atari 2600 or the 5200 here in that lovely silver. Down here on the bottom shelves, we have our Xbox and Xbox 360 collection. There's also just a couple of Xbox One games. We haven't picked up a whole lot of those, but you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's decent. 
Once again, I'm sure you're picking up on a theme here, but all of these sports titles are put in totes. Yes, yeah. Uh, if you look at the tote of the Xbox sports titles, uh, that's probably like twice what you're seeing out here on the How shelf. How many Maddens are in there? We have one more wood grain storage unit. This one actually holds VHS. Anytime we can find something gaming related on a VHS tape, this is where it goes. And this is another shock, unopened Lego Dimensions. We had planned to actually collect all of the sets we wanted before we started the game, but then the uh, Toys to Life Lego sets kind of died and they didn't make any more and we kind of lost that opportunity. So we just need to make the time to play it now. Hanging on the wall, I think this is one of uh, Lady Lacey's most brilliant ideas, this clear shoe holder that we have our handhelds in. It's a great way to display them. You get to see pretty much everything that you have. Easy access, you can just pop your handheld out real quick, put it away real quick, it keeps it nice and neat. You can also put any controllers or peripherals or cords that go to any of these things in them. Keeps everything where it is. So even your power cord can go behind the system if you want. It's just, it's really handy. It's actually funny to think that we have so many handhelds and like I, just never play handheld <laughs> games so it is kind of funny well here we have one of those lovely Wii stands I always love the uh, the console holders you know the whether the old display units of old or the ones like this that were stands that would sit by your TV or entertainment center they're great and I mean we are using it to hold the Wii and then of course the main focus of the room if you can look past all the games the gaming setup itself. So up top, we have matching CRT TVs. Lovely 32 inch television sets. And it was uh, Wes's favorite part of our game room. Yeah, go figure. Of all the stuff in the game room, that was the thing that caught his eye the most. He loved not only that they were CRTs, but matching. <laughs> and then in the middle is a nice flat screen for some of the more modern systems. All of the systems that you see here with, I think, three exceptions are hooked up to one of the three TVs and ready to play. Most of the controllers are actually stored behind the console themselves. Nothing is left plugged in. I only plug these in when it is time to play one of these games, so hopefully it's not going to short anything out. And with all due respect to some of these older systems like the Ataris, I don't know if I trust you to not burn my house down. When setting the consoles up, we initially tried to group them together. Sometimes that didn't work, especially with some of these longer units. Now, shorter things like the Xbox and even the Atari 5200 fit really nice in those cubed cubbies. But then when you start getting to the Bally, to the CDI, things like the Intellivision, the ColecoVision, these are such long systems that they had to go on this longer shelf. Uh, fun fact, actually, this was a dresser unit of sorts that all we did was just not put the doors on and it worked out perfectly to display these. Now amid all of these consoles up top you will see a virtual boy. Uh, awesome, awesome gift from Lady Lacey. And of course we did get a nice console cover. I really love these, especially for the units that don't get a whole lot of play or ones that you just want to make sure there's not a lot of dust collecting on them. They're perfect. They have cutouts in the back for all your cords so you can keep them hooked up. And the fact that they're designed to look like the console itself, you're not hiding the console. Like, look at the Atari right here. Look at the Zelda-themed Wii U gamepad right here. It keeps it safe, but it does still keep it displayed. At the end, we have another Wii storage stand and going up the walls because Lady Lacey's a bit of a bag lady. I'm very much a bag lady. No hiding it, no shame whatsoever. In the corner here, just because the shelf fits so perfectly, 
is the housing unit of all of our loose Atari cartridges. I mean, look at how perfect. Again, a shelf like built for where it was going. And there are some fun display pieces up top. I think we still need to try to figure out how to get that Lego Star Wars clock to work properly. We could never get the clock part of it to come on because it was supposed to be a countdown clock to when Lego Star Wars came out. And then we could never figure out how to turn the clock back on. As Lacey pointed out before, there is the game room sign, courtesy of Peter Bateman, the musical cowboy, Waves and Games. As this was a house from the 60s, we have this lovely built-in bookshelf. Atop of it, though, was uh, Gotji's Roberts, one of his favorite things from the game room. Yeah, go figure. We have board games and games alike in this room, and he likes my fairy garden the best. I think he said he wanted to shrink down and he live did. there. He did. Of course, I don't blame him. There's many times I'd like to shrink down and live in it, too. Initially, we had thought about maybe removing this bookcase, but we've actually put it to good use. We've got uh, a smattering of loose and smaller card games up top. The second row has that Nintendo Power Collection. I think we are only about seven or eight shy of the first 100, so I really want to fill that in. And then on the bottom are some of the fantastic strategy guides we've collected over the years. Whether or not we use them, I've always loved the strategy guides. Uh, some of the ones like Nintendo would actually add some lore to games that didn't ultimately have it. Others would just have some fun, unique art pieces in them. Something that's really neat on this built-in bookshelf that we have right by the front door is our game room guest book. Anytime we have anyone come over and visit, we always, before they leave, make sure they sign the guest book and kind of talk about what we did on their visit and what they like about the game room and just kind of some fun little tidbits and stuff. Beyond the Mario cake pan and that sweet amiibo store kiosk which we put up on a high shelf so no one could touch the screen because we know exactly what GameStop employees were talking about where it makes the same noise all the time and drives you crazy and it doesn't turn off there's the lego dimensions a kiosk as well so that's very fun a nice rack of some of our tabletop games again this is not all of them the lady here loves her tabletop yeah, uh, we have so many board games. They are stashed throughout the house, wherever we can fit them, in tops of other closets, in the garage, the games that we don't really play all that much, and just kind of spattering here and there. So if you want to come over and play board games, we'll have to show you where they all are. Freeze. Now, aside from the board games, the uh, rest of the wall here is not only a work in progress, but a sneak peek behind the camera. You don't usually see this from how we have things set up from when we film, but we have something in store for this cabinet here. There is a lovely collection of geeky tiki's. So whenever we're ready to get our drink on in the game room, we have uh, some fun geeky themed tiki's to choose from. And you can choose your genre from Marvel to Star Trek to Star Wars to fantasy. Now this wall here, while we have some more uh, typical stuff, look, family photos, some memory pieces. Yeah, we're gonna be changing that up and putting some nerdy stuff up there. And then of course, the Amiibo case. So this is a lovely, what did you say? 100 year old case. Yeah. It does light up. And as of recording, it does have all of the Amiibo figures in them full set the cards that's another story but we're talking the figures yeah once upon a time what, what did we think was a great idea let's let's not collect skylanders no no there's too many of those and let's not collect those lego ones or the disney ones those are silly let's go with amiibo there were 12 at the time hmm. i'm telling you at some point we're just gonna have to decide i only want the ones i like
past the doorway to the kitchen. That's right, kitchen right off the game room. How perfect is that? There's a little wall with some nerdy weaponry up there. I'm sure uh, you guys probably recognize a few pieces. And then we come to the center of the room. Now, something that we did was we took these cube units that are very similar to the ones that house the consoles, and we made a little cubby. So another shout out to our music man, Peter Bateman, for the chairs. You're not getting them back because they fit too perfectly here. Not that there's anywhere to sit because Lady Lacey has covered them in all kinds of plushies. At least they're squishy. And look at these huge console plushies too. They're great. Speaking of plushies, right here at the end on, check this out, a Wii themed ottoman is a collection of tiny plushies. Lot, lot, lots of them, like lots of them. I don't think there's enough. I need more. So atop the cubby holes, you have all kinds of stuffs from the Resident Evil mansion from the collector set and a Metroid. You've got some fun little plushies and cute little figures here. You've got the TurboGrafx Mini. You'll see some of the other mini consoles as well. You've even got this great GameCube Kleenex dispenser. Some of the super fun Super Mario Lego sets. the uh, Omni tool from one of the ladies' favorite game series. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite Omni tool in the game room. <laughs> <laughs> now in the cubbies themselves, uh, there's a nice variety of things. We got some Rampage toys because, what was the first game we played as Man and Wife? The Rampage Arcade uh, system. Well, I guess it makes sense to have these guys here. There are also some consoles here that these are not hooked up to anything, of course, because they're just kind of stored on the back shelves. So they're still on display, but they're also the things that aren't going to get as much play as some of the other things. The recently acquired Atari Jaguar being one of them. You've got the 3DO, and then just some various big box pieces, some storage pieces like for the Game Boy, some bongos when you want to go bongo. We are working on expanding to another room to kind of make that into a library. Because we have overgrown this room. Now in our hallway, again air quotes because there's not a lot of space here, we've got this great cardboard Zelda Breath of the Wild piece that we got from GameStop. And while we did once have the Zelda Shrine on it, the slightest touch sent everything falling over. But it does hold plushies remarkably well. We also have the PS1 games stored out here because, again, some fantastic shelves that fit those lovely jewel cases all too well. So they're easy to get to. And yes, of course, some overflow big boxes uh, in the room that will become the library. There are some more overflow big boxes. We like big boxes and we cannot lie but we don't have the space for them. Now, something that you guys may be thinking that you missed in here was uh, some of the more modern systems. Now, while there is a Nintendo Switch, the PS4 and the PS4 Pro, which we use for game nights, is actually in the living room. 
We also have the Xbox One in there, as well as one of the other Switches. The GameCube is currently hanging out in there. And of course, the PS5. But I mean, that thing's so huge, it pretty much needs its own place anyway. But these systems are in here because with the more modern flair, it feels better to have them in the living room where we can play and be comfortable. And you know, Beardo Dragons likes to watch the games too. Well, there you have it, nerdlings. Uh, hopefully we did the game room tour justice again. It's really hard for us to try to figure out how to show you guys what we think you want to see. So please, in those comments down below, let us know what you would like to see. Again, let's you know hear about something for a closer upper. And one thing that I do have to admit is I definitely do not spend the time gaming in here that I really, really want to. Uh, life and work definitely gets in the way of that. But I'm still so proud of us to have this game room. First of all, I, I want to say how much it means to me that my lovely wife, when we were looking for a home, she made it her mission to find a home that had the space for a game room. So this room is 100% possible because of this woman. As far as everything in this game room, as far as everything in this house, I really could not care less about the material value of it. It is not the, the materialistic part of it at all. What I love is that this room, all of these rooms, are filled to the brim with memories. Most things have some kind of memory tied to it. And that's what's always fun when someone comes over and they're looking around and they pick something out and they're like, oh yeah, you know, I actually got that from so-and-so or we picked that up when we went to that's what makes it so much fun that's what makes it so much fun to collect you know uh, a lot of times you'll see like all these people with youtube videos and they have all this junk in the background and it's like wh why why what's the point well the point of this is we take a lot of pride in this i mean neither one of us grew up with the whole lot i mean you know we're very gracious for everything that we did have but this is definitely a testament to how far that we've come as collectors and as yeah. people and it's great to have all these stories tied to it because if it's something from a friend or something from a memory of a time that we went somewhere it's just a part of us you know so it's uh it's kind of a scrapbook in room form i suppose well it's also fun because we find all this stuff together we go to flea markets or garage sales or conventions or whatever and you and i get the joy of finding it and hunting for it and then being like oh do you remember this did you get to play this or no i never got to play this so let's go home and check it out or something yeah. like that so just the fact that we get to do all of this together it's a great way for you and i to get to spend time together doing lots of different things so yeah it's a fun journey to take together Guys, please, comments down below. Anything that you would like to see up close, we'd love to dedicate a video to that as time permits. Uh, we're super slow about stuff like that, but still, let us know. And just let us know if you saw anything that was cool or dumb. Let us know if there's something dumb. That's fine. Might be this guy. <laughs> Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Hit us up on the Retro Refresh. Go over to Tee Public because we've got merchandise over there. And if we like it, we nerd it. And we try to find a place for it. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I can guarantee that that Halo plasma sword, I never chase the cat with that. What? I can guarantee that that mega buster that lights up a big sound, I never chased the cat with that. I guarantee that plush DK barrel, I never chased the cat. You know, I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> he came and tattled on you. Are you being mean to him? No, we're playing. Paul, is that true? You and daddy playing? Gosh, Paul, we're just playing, you tattletale. <laughs>